Okay, now we're back to rotational inertia. And now what I want to do, talk about is if we review, review that last part, when we applied the parallel axis theorem to help find the rotational inertia about point P for complex systems, one of the things we use is this I center of mass. And we can look those up in tables, but we also want to know how to derive those things ourselves. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate to find uh, the rotational inertia about the center of mass, but also about any point you choose. In fact, it's easiest if we start with a rod to go about point P at the end, which is not the center of mass. Uh, about the center of mass, it ends up being about the same type of thing. You just change your limits of integration. So what we want to do, basically, is we want to find rotational inertia for an object. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to find, we're going to integrate, we're going to find the all the little differential uh, rotational inertia. In other words, the rotational inertia for little small sections of that. And we're going to integrate over the whole object, whole object, to find your total rotational inertia. So the general approach, remember that I for a point mass is m r squared, where r is the distance from the center of mass. Okay. So if we do this, if we can pick all our little differential parts, uh, so each differential part has only, uh, only items from the same distance from the center of mass, we can write this as integral of dm, in other words, how much mass there is in each, each little chunk, times r squared. The challenge is always going to be, and we're going to integrate that over the whole object, the challenge is always going to be to pick differential units, differential chunks, so all the parts of each differential chunk are always have share that same r from our, our axis of rotation or the point we're considering. So let's start with, um, with a rod. Okay, we're going to talk about a very thin rod. No, don't worry about the dimension in this case. It has a mass m and a length l. So we could say its density is how much mass, and we write this with an alpha, how much mass there is per unit length. Okay, now if we start doing the same thing we were talking about here, i equals the integral over the whole object of all the little d rotational inertias. And that's the same as dm r squared. Okay, so in other words, we're going to take small little chunks of this, differentially small chunks, uh, infinitesimally small chunks, and we're going to figure out their masses and how far away they are, uh, and use this equation, m r squared, to figure out the rotational inertia for each chunk. And then we integrate over the whole object to find the total rotational inertia. Let's write an expression. First of all, as I mentioned, we want these all these dm's to be the same r apart. Or, excuse me, for, for a given dm, for a given differential mass, we we'll, we'll want all, all parts of it to be the same r apart. Well, you can see here, what we're talking about then is a little differential slice like this, little tiny thing that is dr wide. I'm not drawing that well. I should have left myself more room. But for a little tiny slice there, all the little molecules there are essentially the same r from that point of rotation. Let me call that p just so we have something to talk about. Okay, so the differential mass in this case is going to be how wide that is. Remember we have a linear density, how much mass there is per unit of length here. So it's going to be dr times alpha, which equals dr times m over L. So all I've done is I've taken, I've defined a little differential chunk and I've written an expression for the mass of it. The linear density times how long it is. And that give, gives us something we can put into this equation. So now let's put it in. I equals, it's going to be the integral of, I put dm in, which is dr times m over L times r squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from over here and get this little dm at the very beginning, then the next little dm, and the next little dm, and so forth, all the way out to L. So I'm going to change this. This is my variable of integration, dr. And I'm going to go from 0 all the way out to L. 
Okay, let's do that. I'm going to rearrange this. M over L is a constant. It comes out front. So it's integral from 0 to L of R squared dr. That's a very straightforward integration. Let me write it down here. So it's going to be m over l times r squared dr. The integral of r squared dr is r cubed over 3. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to l. So it's going to be m over l times, I'll put this in parentheses, r cu l cubed over 3 minus 0, sorry, 0 cubed over 3. And that just happens to be ML cubed over L times 3. We can take away 1L from both top and bottom, and you end up with ML squared over 3. There's my rotational inertia about the end of a rod. Okay, I'll leave it as an exercise to you. If you wanted to find the rotational inertia around the center of mass, you would integrate from negative L over 2 to L over 2, right? Because these are L over 2 away from my axis of rotation. These are L over 2. So you'd have from L over 2 to negative L over 2. And when you do that, I center of mass ends up being ML squared over 12. Okay, let's continue on and do the disk. Disk is slightly more difficult, uh, but it's uh, not impossible. Here's my disk, has a mass M and a radius R. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, first of all, let's define the density. And now I'm going to call it the area density is how much mass there is, M, per unit area. And the area of this is pi R squared. That'll be my area density. And we write that as sigma little sigma there. You're used to seeing a big sigma, it looks like a sum, but this is the one we're talking about here for area density. A very common symbol. Lambda for linear density, sigma for area density. Okay, now, once again, we're going to do the same thing where i equals integral of di equals the integral of each of the differential masses times r squared. And we want to pick our differential mass, so all parts of that differential mass are the same distance from the center. Well, a point that's the same distance from all, uh, uh, excuse me, a shape that has the same distance from the center is a circle. Oof, let me call that r, little r. Okay? And the, the mass of this would be, let me put my dm, differential mass for that little guy, and the dr is going to be right there. It's going to be the width of that line, that tiny little line there. So dm is going to be the circumference of the circle. That's how long it is. And how thick it is, it's dr. Okay, so it's um, the differential mass will be this density times the area. Area will be the circumference, 2 pi little r. The thickness is going to be dr. And this ends up, if I rewrite my sigma, m over pi capital R squared times 2 pi r all times dr. Very important to note, this is the radius and the density. That This is the radius of the entire disk. This 2 pi r is just the radius of this little infinitesimal mass element. Well, the pi's cancel. And we end up with m r over capital R squared dr for my, my dm. And what we're going to do is, let's look at this, i equals sum of dm r little r squared. Okay, that's the distance to that little hoop. And the dm is going to be m over capital R squared times 2r, let me put the 2 out front and an r there, times r squared dr. Everybody all right there? And what we're going to do is we're going to go from 0 all the way out to capital R. Those are going to be our limits of integration. So that should be okay. Um, let's take a look at that and see what happens. Okay, let me rewrite that as, let's take out my constants, 2m over r squared times the integral from 0 to r of r cubed 
dr. r cubed dr integral of that is r fourth over 4, so you have 2m over r squared times r to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to r. Let's do that integration, I mean, excuse me, that integration. Let's do the uh, evaluation there. That's 2m over r squared, r, capital R to the fourth over 4. Let's bring the 4 out, in fact. Let's put that right there. And let's do this as capital R to the fourth minus 0. And you can see R to the fourth divided by R squared is R squared. And you end up with 2, oh, excuse me, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. M over 2 times R squared. And that was around the center of mass of the disk, so we can write that as center of mass. And the beautiful thing is once you have that, I could put my center of rotation anywhere. I'm going to use, use m x squared, add that on, to get my total uh, rotational inertia. And I think I'm going to defer the uh, rotational inertia for a sphere for another one.